Hey guys, so I'm going to do an integration tutorial on setting up Orbit within the multiplayer survival game template. Now, Orbit itself is not entirely multiplayer compatible. Um, the developer has said that he wants to make it multiplayer compatible, but there's no ETA on when that might happen. Consequently, this tutorial is about integrating Orbit into a single player project. You can use the time of day system, so the actual animation of the sky and the sun. Uh, from Orbit in a multiplayer project if you want, but you will need to remove all the other elements that require randomization, such as weather and such. Um, also, this is the first tutorial I've done with the mechanical keyboard, so apologies if the keyboard sounds are too loud. Um, so first thing, <coughs> we need a fresh version of the multiplayer survival game template, or your own version of it. Um, this is the version 1.0.0.7, which is currently available on Gumroad and awaiting processing for the marketplace. And this is under Unreal Engine 4.15. So we're just going to do two things to settle up ready for Orbit to be integrated. And that's first of all, uh, go Settings, World Settings, which I already had open here. Under Light Mass, drop this down and go Force No Pre-Computed Lighting. Set that to True. And Build Once. And then also we want to jump into project settings, scroll down here to rendering, and f find the section called lighting and set generate mesh distance fields to true. Now a lot of these settings are for the orbit system specifically. Christian's own setup video goes into a lot more detail about what they are and why you're doing it this way. I'm just going through them quickly here to show you how to settle up. So we close that. Now we don't want to restart the editor just yet. What we actually want to do is close it so we can add the orbit system. So hit close and save selected. And then down under your launcher, you want to click add to project, select your project, let it do its thing. Yep, so that's done. And then open it up again. And if this takes too long, I'll cut away, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so that's opened up. So the first thing we want to do is open the level that we're going to be working with. I can't see anything in the main menu level. We'll open survival map. And just let this do its thing, its landscape textures, and also it did the uh, distance meshes. Now, what we want to do is go to our... I'll just minimize all of these. So we want to find our sunlight, which this or skylight. I'll start with sunlight. We want to find the sunlight and make sure that's set to movable. It should be in the default project, but it needs to be on your project as well. Then we also want to make sure the skylight is set to movable. Again, this will be on the default project. We want to set this source type from SLS captured scene to SLS specified cube map. And then we want to select the T underscore blank cube map, which is from orbit itself. Um, next we want to add in another directional light and we want to just call this moon so it's easy to find. You can call it whatever you want but it's the light for the moon. We need to make sure that is set to movable and what else do we need to do? We need to add in an exponential height fob map uh, actor and that stays as is. We need to add a post-processing uh, volume if your level doesn't already have one. If your level has a unbound post-processing volume, that's fine. We need to add this in and we need to make sure it is set to unbound. And if you have an atmospheric fog actor, Christian recommends you delete that. Uh, we don't have one in here, but we do have a hot sky sphere, so we need to delete this guy. Now, we'll just save there where we're going. Um, so next thing you need to do is actually drop the orbit actor into your world. Now the first time you do this, it takes a little while, I think it took about 40 seconds on my computer. Um, I've already done it once, so it's already cached, so it won't take that long. But just be aware, when you drop it in, it might appear like the engine's frozen. Just wait it out. And unless your system is quite old, it should be okay. It might take a minute or two, depending on it though. Um, so once this is in, we can assign the actors that we've got. So I'll just... Close all of these, so it's a bit easier to work with for now. Um, so we want to go to this section here, actors, and we want to assign our actors. So the sunlight, we've got sunlight. 
Um, so that is the actor you want to use for the sun. And you can see the things are already starting to change in here. The moonlight, we want to set that one that we just made, the moon. Uh, the skylight actor is the skylight actor that we have in the level already. Height fog is the exponential height fog we just dropped in. And the post processing volume is the unbound post processing volume, the one we just dropped in. Um, so we'll just save as we go with these. Now, the next thing you want to do is while the orbit actor is still selected at the moment, it's got no clouds or anything, you want to jump down to weather pattern, pick your weather pattern. So there's all these ones here. And we're just going to go automated and set it to that. Now, you can play around with these settings as much as you want. We're just going to leave everything else in the orbit system to default. Um, so keep in mind that it looks very bright and washed out like it would in a stylized game here. Um, that doesn't necessarily suit the aesthetic we're going for in the level here, but we're just going to leave it as is and you guys can work that out yourself. Um, so that's all we need to do for that. What we need to do is actually open up this blueprint orbit. A BP orbit blueprint here and we're interested in the event graph now given the complexity of this system and all the features it has it is quite uh, a chunky blueprint to work with but we're actually looking for this bit right here called time of day math so if you zoom all the way out you just want to go to this one here and go time of day math and what we want to do is create a new event so right click and go custom event wait for that to load and give that a name so we're going to call it msgt update and once that's done we'll add two inputs to it like i said everything's a little bit um chunky working in here and it's just because of the amount of stuff in orbit orbit's a really comprehensive system um, so the first one we want to use is time and the second one is play rate and these both need to be set to floats come on and once that's done what we want to do is drag this guy Oops, no, we want to copy and paste these two. So we're leaving as much of the orbit system intact as possible so that if you want to go back to it, you can do. I'm going to drop that onto there, and connect time up to this one, turn off fire updates, it's important, and then set play rate up to this one. It's all a little bit more readable. And click on that. Drag that there, and then what we want to do is bring this one over to here, and then Alt Shift on that one, uh, Alt click on that one, sorry. So we're disabling the system that Orbit uses to run the timeline, and instead we're using our own. And you probably should Alt click on those as well, just for to make sure. So what's happening is we take the time input, we set the playback position on this guy here, day passing. We do not fire updates and then we set the play rate to the play rate input here and that will go through and do the rest of the logic for us and that's all you need to do in the orbit blueprint so we just click compile wait for it to compile and click save when it's done come on and once that's saved we can close this guy and then the next thing we want to do is go content, SGT, blueprints, components, and right click on C underscore manager hyphen time of day. We want to click create blueprint child class and just give this a name. So we'll just add the suffix of orbit there. Open this one up. You can get rid of those. And we want to override three uh, functions here. So we'll start with the time of day ones. So third party initialize and also third party update now on third party initialize we want to get all actors of class and we want to set that class to bp underscore orbit just this one here connect that up then we want to get the first one of these so we just do a get and leave that as zero 
Because you're not going to have more than one orbit actor in the level. At least you shouldn't. Um, and then we want to promote that to variable and give that a name. So orbit blueprint is good enough for us. And we just drag that and connect that up there. And that's all you need to do for the initialize function. Um, so the next thing we need to do is the update function. And what we want to do here is bring this one in, hold control and off, drag off that an MSGT update, which is that event we made. Just give us a bit of space there. And we want to get current time and also get current speed. Now, similar to Ultra Dynamics Sky, Orbit doesn't work on the same timeline rate as the MSGT. So the multiplayer survival game template works based on a timeline of 86,400 seconds. Um, the orbit system works on times of zero to 2400. Uh, so what we want to do is work out the difference and you can do this simply with a calculator. You can just pull up 86,400, divide that by 2400 and you get 36. <coughs> so what that means is this time is going to be 36 times larger than the time we need here. So all we need to do is go divide by 36 and I'll leave all those zeros there because float maths are notoriously incorrect. And we want to do the same thing for the current speed. And we plug that into play rate. Let's just comment all this for keeping things accurate. Get all instances of the orbit blueprint. Get the first result and then store result as a variable for use. Now 4.15 has this stupid thing where you need to hover over the comments. Okay. Um, now this could be done in here but this is actually quite an expensive action so you really want to do it once rather. Um, and then this one here, we just want to do run, update, passing, current time, and current speed, post format for orbit use. And so that's it. That will actually control all the time of day stuff. So what we can do is go to our controller, which is under content, SGT, blueprints, game. Controller, that back on the screen, and we just want to add a time of day orbit, and then obviously we don't want two of them, so we get rid of the old one. We can go in here, click on use custom system, and then set our cycle length to something like 60 so we can see it. Um, and that's all ready to go. So if we hit compile and save, and run this in a new window, we should see, yep, there we go, we've got the orbit system running and that should be a 60 second day. So it's doing all its stuff, you can see the clouds going, sun, which looks a lot better than Unreal Engine's default sun, and so on. Now the temperature isn't currently set up, so what we're going to do there is we can close the survival controller because everything we've got ready there, actually I'll leave it open just in case. Um, what we want to do here is override another function and what we want to do is over uh, create a new event first, sorry my bad. So custom event and we give this a name something like update temp from orbit. And what we want to do with this one is set current temperature, that one there. And I believe we want to take, let me just look at my reference work here. Yep, so we get this, we get temperature from the orbit blueprint. Drop that into there. And then we also want to call update world temperature here. Oops, no, sorry. 
And I'm going to write override update world temperature as a function. And I believe we just plug that in. Yep. There. So what's happening here is we're using these settings to run the actual time of day so that everything that in the survival game template that uses this and all these settings that you can use feed into orbit. Um, you can then use orbit to control all the graphical side of time of day and all the weather patterns and that sort of thing. And then what we want to do is feed the, the temperature defined by those weather patterns back into the survival game template so it can be used. So that's what this does. So we just need to call that now. So what we want to do is override the start temperature cycle, which is this one here. And what we do with this is we can ignore the simulate setting because that's for multiplayer use. What we want to do is call this function once so that it runs on the first time it's run. And then we want to set a timer by event. You could do function name, but we're going to do event. We want to drag this up to this guy here. So the timer is triggering this event. And we want to keep the updates for the temperature uh, in sync with the time of day settings. So we'll look for update frequency. We'll update interval. No, frequency. What am I doing? Get update. There we go. Get update interval. Drag this over to here and click looping. And with that, I think we should be all done. So we just compile and save. And that's all ready to go. So what we can do, uh, there is one other thing actually. By default, Orbit is set up with a temperature range that matches Fahrenheit and the survival game template is set up with a temperature range that matches Celsius. Uh, these are just numbers, so you can go either way, but um, I'm Australian and we use Celsius, so I'm going to go with Celsius. So the temperature range by default in here would be between 6 and 50. So what we're going to do is just change orbit to be the same sort of thing. So maximum would be 50, minimum would be 6. Oh, that didn't work. Why are they not changing? Okay guys, so I've sorted this one out. I'm not sure if it's um, something to do with orbit or whether it's I'm just missing a setting. Basically, um, these settings that we have here for the daily high and low don't work for whatever reason. If we try and change them, they just go back to whatever they're meant to be. Um, and that's because down here we've got this temp high back up and temp low back up. Um, so what I've done is I've just changed those. So to match the survival game default settings, I've made the higher temp 50 and the low temp 6. Um, so that's a range that suits uh, Celsius countries. Um, and that allows me to use those as my daily high and daily low. I have mentioned this to Christian and he'll probably watch this tutorial as well. So if he updates me and says this is not the way to do things, I will let you know and make a brief update. But basically that allows us to have the time of day sorted as well as the temperature. As you can see the temperatures there uh, is well within a Celsius scale and it should peak at 50 and then I'd say during the night time or early morning it'll drop down to 6. So that's how you set up Orbit. Um, like I said, do keep in mind it's currently not entirely multiplayer ready. You can use the first portion of this tutorial to set up the time of day um, as the actual engine that powers the time of the day is from the multiplayer survival game template. So that will ensure that um, the... Oh, my computer's frozen. There we go. Uh, that will ensure that the time synchronizes across clients, but you will need to disable all the weather effects and stuff, otherwise you'll have rain on some clients and not others in different temperatures and so on. Anyway, if you have any questions, comments or suggestions for other integration tutorials or other tutorials in general, please let me know and leave them in the comments below or check out the links in the description. Cheers.